Now you start. Okay. Okay. So now the the, the it is the okay. So I will talk about the development of the nine literal cell uh, during a uh, the wholesome. And uh, I think it's a good um, uh, um, subject to start with. So you will know where you located in the Middle East uh, and what kind of research, marine research we are doing here. So the nine literal cell is, is a, 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 a geographic um, district, let's say, that is connected to the uh, outflow from the Nile Delta that is transported along the continental shelf of the, of the Mediterranean, the Southeastern Mediterranean. And we did our work there. These are my, uh, my friends um, and uh, they did the work. And this was basically, it was published only two years ago, but it was my uh, Sufit Federman Moore, which was only more at that time. She got married along her family. Uh, she's uh, the student that did the work, okay? So uh, how do I change? I do. You change it. Thank you. Okay. So again, to uh, um, make you understand where are we located. So this is the Nile Pan Delta. And we have this region here that is a unique corner in the Southeastern Mediterranean because most of the Mediterranean coast and continental shelf is made of carbonate rocks, okay, or carbonate sediments. However, because we are receiving sediments from the Nile, we are also getting a lot of sands, a lot of fake clays and semi-classic sediments that are transported along our coast, okay, by the longshore currents. And this condition is relatively new in terms of geology, because we are starting to see it only to 250,000 years ago, okay? Before that we have, this is a rich carbonate unit, okay? Before that we have mostly carbonate units on our continental shelf, but starting 250,000 year, 50, years ago, we are starting to see the famous sand of our coast, okay? The quartz, yellowish uh, 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 light sand. Okay, so this is a, a unique condition. And the next slide shows that I'm going to uh, concentrate only on the holes in the upper part of the, uh, of the record. The whole of it? Okay, the upper part of the record. So there is a full record and there are a lot of work that were done on that record, but let's uh, get into uh, the last uh, uh, 10, 8,000 uh, years. The next slide will show what kind of sediments do we have here. So we are looking here on the Nile literal cell uh, uh, map, and this is the map of the, uh, the coast of Israel, and we are located here, okay? This is Haifa Bay. Uh, and what the map is showing is the percent of calcium carbonate, okay? So you can see that as we go south to towards the Nile Delta, the amount of calcium carbonate is reduced, okay? Because most of the sediment is made of bars. It's made, made of silicates that are driven from the continent by the Nile, uh, and then they are transported along, along the coast. Next slide. Another important phenomenon in order to understand the record that I'm going to show you is that uh, in the past, before the Nile uh, River was dammed by the Aswan uh, uh, Dam in the 1960s, um, Nile floods reached the Mediterranean annually, carrying huge amounts of sediments. Okay, this is an image from the 60s showing this uh, uh, flood plumes entering into the Mediterranean. This is, of course, relatively fresh water, which is floating on the seawater. You can see here a map showing the uh, salinity gradient from, from, uh, um, uh, from the uh, Nile towards the uh, north. And you can see this tongue of relatively, it's not fresh water, but relatively less saline water that is uh, floating towards uh, the north with the longshore currents. Okay, so this is also another phenomena that uh, um, characterizes the Nile littoral cell. Okay, uh, of course, 
when they dam the Aswan, the uh, Nile River with the Aswan Dam, this phenomena uh, stop. Okay. Okay. And um, sources for the sediments that we see, we of course have the entire Nile, the Nile uh, River watershed. Okay, you can see here, this is the Nile River. Uh, I think it's the longest river on the world. Uh, and we are not even seeing the headwaters, but you can see that it is uh, uh, passing throughout the entire uh, eastern part of the uh, African continent, and it is passing different geological uh, provinces. This is the Saharan Shield, uh, the uh, Bazaars, and the Arabian Nubian uh, shield, okay, so different uh, geological outcrops. We will talk about that uh, later in the, in the talk. Uh, you can see that we also have a lot of dust storms, okay? Uh, and these are images from current days, okay? We know that during the glacial period, the, the amount of dust that arrived into the region was even uh, much higher, but this is a significant portion of the sediments that at the end will arrive into the sea with the rivers. And these are the local streams, okay? So these, these streams are uh, in the watershed, they're cleaning the watershed, bringing all of those sediments into the continental shelf, into the Nile littoral cell. So we have an interplay between the sediments that are coming from the watershed uh, of the Nile River and sediments that are coming from local sources, okay? Next slide. Okay, and um, just again, this is just a map showing it uh, more clearly. We have here the Nile Delta with the river arriving. We have the continental shelf. This is the shelf edge and the continental shelf was exposed during the last glacier maximum. Last glacier maximum sea level was a hundred, about 100 meters uh, uh, below the current sea level. So all of this area was exposed. And you can see here also the Sinai Negev sand dunes, okay? That are also sediment that was transported from the Nile Delta and then blown into, into the uh, Sinai Peninsula. And from that, we have the, the refugees yeah. of the loss, less source, okay? So this is also an onion sediment, much more, uh, they are finer, fine grain, and they're mostly representing the dust. Okay, this is sand that is uh, transported uh, close to the surface, and this is dust that is coming from, from the atmosphere. And we want to study the development of the Nile littoral cell. We want to, to understand how the continental shelf, how sediments accumulated on the continental shelf. And we are doing it using a uh, two sediment cores, V110 and V115. Okay, this. Two uh, um, cores were available to us due to some engineering uh, uh, coring. We didn't go and, and get them. They, they, they were too long. They are about seven meters. Today, we are able to get seven meters, but uh, when we just started working here, we didn't have the equipment to get seven meters of sediments from the uh, bottom of the sea. Um, and there were uh, the trips from around 30 meters okay, of water there. Next. Okay, so now let's go into the re results and, and look at the, um, the basic parameters of, uh, of sedimentology, grain size, okay? Before that, you can also see here the uh, age depth model. Uh, this is depth and this is age, and you can see that we have the older samples at the bottom, and as we go up in the in the record, we are getting uh, younger and younger uh, ages. The, the fact that the model was linear and looked nice like that uh, showed that there is continuous accumulation on the, on the continental shelf, okay? We uh, uh, then measured grain size in the course, okay? So we had about seven meters of course, but because we did them, the results, this is the percent of uh, uh, grain size. Uh, and then the depth of the core was transferred into calendar age before present. 
okay? We know what is the age of each horizon in the core. So we can now present it as calendar age before present. And these are the two cores, the northern core in blue and the southern core in red. And you can see that there is a big change that is seen mostly in the red core. Before that, you can also see here the reconstructed sea level change, okay? So about uh, 8,000, 10,000 years ago, sea level was uh, still low, but as we progress into the Holocene, the glaciers in the polar regions are melting and sea level is rising, okay? So there is a big change here that we are seeing. It. There is a rise in sea level, and then about 5,000 years ago, it stabilized, and this is about the, the, the current uh, uh, sea level that we, we have today, okay? Before that, the continental shelf was still exposed, okay? So you can see in the uh, uh, southern curve that we have a lot of sand compared in, in, the, late, in the early Holocene compared to the uh, late Holocene, okay? So, and uh, Juan, Ah, okay. Okay, so here you can see, I will move to that. We can see that we can divide the southern core into two uh, areas of, of um, conditions. Here we see the sea level rise and probably the nilotic transgression, transgressive sands, okay? We know that when sea level was rising, it was taking sediment, eroding sediment from the Nile Delta. This is a, 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 a figure from a very famous paper by uh, Stanley and Warren from, uh, from the 90s, and they published a, um, the geological history of the Nile Delta, okay? So you can see that, uh, about 30 to uh, 11,000 uh, years ago, everything was exposed. We, we didn't have a, 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 any a flooding of the sea, but about uh, 11 to 8,000 years ago, sea level is rising. And at, at that time, we also have a lot of sands in the Nile Delta. And these sands are being transported into our region, and we are seeing it here, okay, with high high uh, amounts of uh, sands. Uh, next one, here. At the same time, we are also seeing, we are, I'm not showing it here because it belongs to a, a previous work, we are seeing a lot of recycled benthic foraminifera. Benthic foraminifera are <laughs> microscopic shell, okay? And um, that we find them in the sediments and by looking at them under the microscope, we can learn a lot about the conditions in the seabed. At that time, we're seeing that we have a lot of recycling. They are very eroded, broken, meaning they are being transported with the longshore currents. It's not that they just sink at the bottom and stay there, but they are being transported intensively because sea level is rising. Um, next. Okay. We also measured different uh, proxies uh, to study the uh, Okay, anyway. Hello, Okay, never mind. So first of all, we are looking. We are looking at we are looking at the uh, three different proxies. Okay, these three proxies are the amount of calcium carbonate. If you remember, in the first map, I showed the amount of calcium carbonate along the nine literal step. So you are seeing here that there are changes in the calcium carbonate content in the course. In blue, it's the northern core, and in red, it's the southern core. We also measure the total organic carbon. This is the amount of organic carbon that we see in the sediment, and also the delta 
C13, uh, C okay? That uh, C13 can give us information about the source of the organic material. Is it coming from terrestrial areas, like, uh, you know, wood or, or pollen, or is it uh, uh, connected to phytoplankton blooms, okay? Algal blooms in the sea. So what we can see here that there is a big transition, okay, that is happening about 5,500 uh, years ago, okay? We already say that at that time, sea level is rising and it's stabilized, okay? But here we are getting more information from the primary productivity uh, uh, process. So we are seeing here that we have an increase or we have high content of calcium carbonate in the beginning of the Holocene. And then we are seeing a reduction in the calcium carbonate. The reason for that, or the, the reason um, um, the interpretation is uh, uh, that the amount of sediment coming from the Nile is changing, okay? We don't get the amount, the same amount of sediment coming from the Nile River, okay? And, and, and a, a hint for that is that you can see here that we have high amount of calcium carbonate after they started operating the Aswan Dam, okay? The Aswan Dam, what does the Aswan Dam uh, does? It stops all the fine sediments, the clays, it stops them in the uh, dam and they cannot come. And the reaction of the Nile literal side to that is that we see less clay and we see more calcium carbonate in terms of percentage, okay? So the reason for that is that we have less sediments coming from the Nile at that time, okay? We know that we saw a lot of quartz veins, but they are coming from the Nile Delta that is being destroyed by the uh, transgression of the sea. But the fine sediment that is coming with the river, for some reason, is not coming. And we will talk about that more. Uh, we see that we have a, a, a low sea surface productivity, okay, less the TOC uh, is lower, but then here we are starting to have higher content of total organic carbon, okay? So there is a big change in the amount of uh, uh, nutrients that are coming. And also we can see here that we have in these conditions, oligotrophic conditions, we almost don't see the Delta C13 uh, uh, is giving us only a signal of terrestrial organic material. And only after 6,000 years, we are starting to see phytoplankton blooms, okay? Or the, the percentage of phytoplankton uh, blooms increase, okay? And this means that we have more nutrients that are coming uh, into the area. We can also see a big difference between the North and the South, okay? And what could be the reasons for that? The reason for that is the difference from the source of the nutrients, which is the Nile River, okay? In the north, we have lower, uh, 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 lower content of phytoplankton blooms compared to the south, because the south will be receiving every summer the floods that are coming with the Nile. Next, right? Okay, now I want to move. We looked at the primary productivity uh, um, uh, proxies. Now I want to look at the geochemistry, the major and trace elements, okay, that are representing different sedimentological fractions. So first of all, we plotted everything on a, 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 a like a, a statistical graph that is showing what is the correlation between different elements. So you can see that uh, we have the elements like calcium, strontium, and barium that are mostly represented, uh, represent the biogenic fraction of the sediments. And we have all of those like uh, uh, potassium, titanium, aluminum, iron, magnesium, and so on that are uh, representing the clays. Okay, so these are the materials that are coming from the Nile River, where these ones are the ones that are produced in the ocean, the organic material, shells, or manifera, and so on. We also have the quiet sands, okay? And each one of them is representing a different sort of sediment or different conditions for the sediments. So knowing that and seeing that there is a negative correlation between the biogenic a fraction and the clays, we move to the next step, which is looking at, Pia? 
looking at uh, but the for I don't we can see what the fuck there are a few for looking at the uh, uh, the ratios between different elements in the core okay so here we have the time okay and these are different elemental ratios okay and each one of them is uh, representing a different a different uh, province of sediment or a different condition. So first of all, you can see that there is a big transition, okay? Again, as you remember, around 5,000 to 6,000 years, there is a big transition, the mid Holocene transition. Okay, okay, so let's now look at each one of them. So for example, uh, calcium to aluminum and barium to aluminum represent the ratio between the organic versus CVC plastic sediments. Um, and uh, you can see here really nicely that we have high ratios in the beginning of the Holocene and then they are reduced, okay? If you remember, we also had high calcium carbonate contents at that time, okay? So that goes uh, together with that. Next slide. Okay, next. Also, when we look at the, uh, we did our uh, geochemical analysis both on the uh, fine fraction and the coarse fraction. The coarse fraction is mostly the, it's the bulk. It includes also the, um, uh, the coarse sand that we have. Here we wanted to see the fine fraction that mostly represent the uh, material coming from the Nile, the fine grained material that is floating with the Nile, um, and here we see that we have ratios that are showing that we have lead clay mineralogy and dust very wind from the Sahara, okay? So we see here that uh, these elements are representing both the uh, fraction that is coming with dust, okay? And also heavy minerals that are always coming together with the coarse sand. Okay, so this is another signal showing the coarse sand that are coming, but at the same time, we also have fine, uh, uh, the fine fraction that is representing dust. Okay, next slide. And uh, the last one is the iron to silica, which is a ratio that uh, gives us information about the weathering of the Ethiopian highland basalts. I will go later on, I will show the map again of, uh, of the watershed of the Nile, the African watershed of the Nile, and you will see that we have different geologists there. And one of the distinct geologists there, uh, uh, outcrops, is the, uh, located at the Ethiopian Highland Bazaar. This, uh, this is a volcanic area, and volcanic rocks uh, contribute a lot of iron into the system. Okay, so when we see an increase in this uh, in this ratio, it means that we have more uh, sediments coming from the Ethiopian uh, highland basalts. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now let's summarize the geochemical uh, parameters and what is exactly happening in the early Holocene. So we know from the literature that during the early Holocene. We have monsoon rains uh, because of big, uh, peak uh, insulation. I won't get into that. But during that time, we have more uh, humidity in North um, in Africa, and we have enhanced flow of the Nile River. Okay, so a lot of water is coming from the Nile River. However, because there is more water in in the Saharan uh, region there is more vegetation. And when we have more vegetation, we have less erosion. And this is why we see less sediments coming into the system. So we have during that time a relative high content of biogenic material due to starvation of plants. okay? We also see the transgressive coarse sand uh, that uh, is transported along the shelf. Okay, next slide. In the late Holocene, we see a decrease in precipitation over the Nile. We are entering into the arid uh, environment that we are seeing today in North Africa, the Sahara region. Um, a watershed increase in surface erosion. We have less vegetation. And we also see that the Nile seasonal floods uh, are uh, 
transporting the basaltic signature, okay, because there are less vegetation, these volcanic rocks are being eroded, and we see the signal as elevated ratios of uh, iron to silica. We are seeing a decrease in the relative biogenic signature due to the increase if in anilotic fats. And also, we have uh, see an increase in dust input in the past 3,000 years. This is like an anecdote, but um, this uh, increase, the, the resolution of this research is not concentrated in this last a few thousand years, but there is evidence that we see it also in the Dead Sea uh, and in other records that in the last 3,000 years, the climate even becomes more and more arid. Okay, and we see it in that. You can see that we are only seeing it in the northern core because the southern core is mostly influenced by the material that is coming from the Nile. Okay, so it's not seeing the signature of aridity that is uh, more. Um, it is characterizing more the Levant area, which is more, more arid than the rest of the watershed of the Nile. Next slide. We can also see it when we look at the local streams versus the Nile contribution. We I plotted here the iron percentage versus the alumina percentage, okay? And you can see really clearly in both cores, we have the blue and red cores, the northern and Southern core, and this all of those dots are after six thousand years, and all of those do dots represent the early Orson. And on the margins of this uh, uh, mixing line, we are seeing the local streams versus the Nile sediments. Okay, so it's a very clear cut. There is a transition that is happening about six thousand years ago. Before that, in the early Orson, we mostly saw the local streams in the region, and um, uh, uh, after 6,000 years, we are seeing the signature of the basalts, the Nile River sediments. Okay, next. Okay, and what are the local sources of sediments? Okay, it's kind of when we started, the, when we worked on that, we didn't imagine that we will see the uh, signature of the local streams, because we have this mighty, uh, Nile River, the largest river in the world, uh, how we will see a small signal of the local rivers. But we did see it because if you remember when it was wetter here, there was more vegetation and less erosion. And what is the local signature? The local signature are the, the soils that are made of dust that is coming from all the region, okay? So these are uh, images of the Negev uh, highlands. Uh, we have these uh, Olean deposits, less uh, deposits, and they are flushed with the uh, local rivers into the Mediterranean, into the Nile littoral cell. And while now it's a, a completely uh, very arid desert region, uh, in the early early health, the climate was uh, wetter. Okay, so we had more flash floods entering into the Mediterranean, uh, transporting these sediments that originated from dust that deposited on the watershed. Nicholas, next. Okay, so to look at the more regional uh, image of the of the sediment sources. Uh, we move to look at the, um, the last proxy that I'm going to present here, which is strontium isotopes to uh, and neodymium isotopes. Okay, this is the uh, epsilon neodymium, another way to present the ratios is neodymium, and this is strontium 87 to 86. And again, you can see here, really, I, I won't get into the systematics of strontium and neodymium, it's very complicated. But first of all, two things you can see here. Here, it, that there is a transition at the same time. So we see this transition in all of the proxies. And also you can see here again, this is the geological map, the Saharan shields, Arab and Nubian shields, and the basalts of the Ethiopian islands. And you can see that each one of them has a number here uh, that, um, can be attributed to that geology. So it is a signature of the rocks of those regions. So if we have material that is eroded from these uh, uh, regions, we have a signal 
for those regions. Okay, so these regions are contributing uh, sediments that are transported by the Nile, but and especially the Saharan uh, shields and the Arabian Lumian shields are also contributing uh, materials as dust. Okay, dust coming from the desert is most of the time sourced from these regions. And I would like to see something right now. It, uh, can. And you can see here, these are the basalts, okay? The basalts are mostly eroded by the rain and transported by the Nile River. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay. Shall I put this to see the from? Okay. So basically, this is, I think, the last slide before, before uh, my summary. And um, it's the most complicated one. We are looking at the neodymium and strontium fields. Okay, these are two isotopic systems uh, that can give us really good information about the source of the sediments. They are very accurate. And the way uh, geologists work with this kind of um, isotopic systems is to compare them with different sources. Okay, so on this plot we have in yellow. Uh, and you can see here in red and, and uh, circles and, and blue triangles, the, the samples from, from uh, our course. And the rest of the fields are representing other sources in the um, in area of the Levant and North Africa. So for example, the Sahara uh, granatoids and the African uh, Nubian shield granatoids, these are, these are the, the fields, okay? So rocks coming from these areas have uh, ratios um, of strontium between these numbers and of uh, uh, epsilon nodinium between these numbers, okay? However, a lot of work was also done on um, sediments in the area uh, of Israel and, and the Levant. For example, we have here mountain soil coming from this region, okay, in the Galil. We have uh, less sediments from the Tibot. This is in the Negev. Uh, we have uh, 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 the Negev less sediments, okay? So we have different uh, uh, fields of uh, of, uh, um, of epsilon nodinium to strontium isotopes that are a signature for different possible sources. So this way it's possible to try and understand where the sediment is coming from. So our sediment are also contemporary dust. Okay, so the, the dust today, these are the fields of the dust today. So you can see that our sediments, the, the older part of the record are located here. And they, they moved here, and now they moved here. And you can see that it is happening, at least in these two fields, it is happening in both of the fields. So it's a regular signature. It's not local to that specific core, but it's a regular signature. So using these diagrams, we were able to show that there was an evolution or a change in the sources of sediments, mostly by the different dust that is arriving. And what we see is that in the early Eocene, we are located here, closer to the African sources of sediments and closer to uh, uh, sediments that were deposited in the Negev Desert in, uh, uh, in the less, the Eolian deposits. But as we move into the younger period of the late Holocene, we are moving closer to the knife sediments that are, if you remember, also had high content of iron because of the basaltic signature. Okay, so using neodymium and strontium, we could also figure out what are the sources of the sediment. So my last slide gives you the entire summary, and we were able to see how the treated sediments were mobilized to the Nile literal, uh, Nile literal cell or shelf from the washer, uh, watershed and also from local stream. Sea level rise is responsible for the Nile Delta called sand recycling and transport along, along the Nile literal cell. During the early Olsen, we see that the inner shelf was characterized by oligotrophic conditions. Uh, meaning we had had less nutrients and salvation of fine sediments due to the humid conditions in the Nile watershed. If you remember, there was more vegetation. 
and dust that accumulated in the surrounding desert was being mobilized by local streams, uh, by local weather conditions. And in the last uh, 5,000 years, we have, uh, well, I, I forgot to talk, talk about it, but if you remember, we had in the, in the southern core, we had a lot of sand at the beginning of the Holocene. And in the later Holocene, the late Holocene, we see a distinct mud bed, okay? The sediments become finer and they represent uh, the materials that are coming from the Blue Nile basaltic sources. Uh, and they represent the annual summer flash floods that are coming with the night. And in the last uh, few thousand years, we are also seeing a, sig a signal for a vivification of the region. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Any question? Yes. Um, first of all, thank you for the lecture. It was very interesting and important for my um, you said that in the early Holocene, there was the it was a humider um, period with more participation, more vegetation, and more organic matter in the Nile Delta, and it's not goes with the, in the same hand to me with the oligotrophic condition of yeah. the. Southeastern Mediterranean, because if we have more organic matter in the Nile Delta, we assume to have more nutrition. We didn't have a full regular reserve, the Pora, Mamash Deva, Pala, La Pokra, Poxel, Sean, 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 Okay. Yeah, this is what I talked about. So we, the organic carbon was low. It, it was low, but we had more vegetation in the delta. So yeah. how we come? Have, no, we did have more vegetation in the delta. We had more vegetation in the headwaters of the Nile River watershed. So it prevented from erosion. It prevented erosion of sediments. Inorganic sediments, but, Inorganic but, sediments, but the yeah. watershed was greener, so we're supposed to have more organic matter in the Nile itself. Yeah, but at, at that time, also, it's the organic material that we are seeing from land is also preserved on land. It is not coming because of the high concentration of vegetation. The uh, oligotrophic condition, meaning that we have less for the, it's, the, the sea is less productive, uh, is I didn't say, say it here, but it's also based on the, the micropalontological assemblage. And we know from the uh, micro fossils that the conditions were less favorable for them because of low nutrients. So the, 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 the interpretation is also based on microfauna that was found there. And can I ask another question? Yes. Um, the core, um, I don't know, 8,200 years ago, it was on coastal conditions, mm -hmm. coastal area. In, in time, it got into deeper and deeper, deeper water. So, that, so for that, how can uh, it's like It's very unpreserved. Um, system, the coastal um, system. Yeah, so, so okay. how can we be sure that the sediments that were really there were, weren't eroded with the sea level rise and what we yeah. see is, is not um, erosion surface? Okay, so first of all, uh, you can see that the, the uh, chronology is continuous. That, that's a good uh, sign that there is no no unconformity, but I would say the, the numbers here are very small, but there is an unconformity on the top, okay? It goes only all the way to 1,000 years ago because the, the upper part was, was eroded. And I think when, when sea level stabilized and during the Holocene, we, we are starting to see this evolving surface. We certainly see, but in this region, in this uh, time, it's mostly accumulating. How um, um, poor the record is, 
it's always a question in geology. But, yeah, but it makes sense because the sand is accumulating and they're heavier than the other um, grain sizes. Mm -hmm. But let's say about carbon and stuff that are lighter in weight than the sands, they could blowing inland go farther north with the streams and everything. During, during that time, there is also an increase in calcium carbonate. I know why you are asking it. I, I know that you're not It's relevant to your research, and you are seeing at that same, at the, at that same time, you are seeing on land that the olean sediments uh, include more carbonate. So if you remember, yeah. there is also higher contents of carbonate because we don't see the fines that are coming from the Nile because they are stored now on the continent because of the um, percentage of high, uh, a lot of vegetation in that time. So relatively, we have more biocarbonated fragments on the continental shelf that are also formed to transport inland uh, by, by wind. I have another question, but maybe I would ask it on person because okay. I think it's it's getting to a conversation okay. between the two of us. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. It's, it's interesting to see exactly on this slide. So age depth model is quite linear. We notice around six thousand years there is a little, like actually it's a dramatic decreasing of uh, sedimentation rate. So I wonder. Like, is this something related to the changes what we see in all the proxies? What happened in the mid? Yeah. Or, the, the, yeah. Or something uh, also related to the compaction. Well, the compaction here was not a. Uh, we didn't model the compaction because it's only seven meters, and it's very. Um, it's not a. Uh, it's not buried for too long, and um, so compaction doesn't have an effect here. Uh, I need to say that the chronology here is not so good because we only have five samples, six samples. Okay, so. I tried in the paper to say more about sedimentation rates, but then I decided that I, I cannot do it because I don't have enough material or enough samples for dating. So I cannot answer that question. I expected to have a big change in the accumulation rates here. And at the beginning, I, I thought I'm seeing it, but after I started calibrating the age, I saw that it's not significant. Mm -hmm. So I cannot answer that. In order to answer that, I need to have more dates. And we are now dating another core, uh, more to the north. Um, it was supposed to be a core that we worked for, that we worked on for marine uh, submarine sites, but we saw the same signal also in the sediments that are not slided. And and uh, hopefully there I have more more ages, um, and I could say uh, say more about the sedimentation rate. But yeah, it, it, it's an an open question. But, Thank you. More questions? Okay, so in the audience virtually, do you have questions? Well, you can put them on chat. And probably they don't. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> we will um, resume next week. Okay. And I think we have in Germany, we're going to be in Germany. Okay, so I think. expect to see you all back here, right? It will be this room. What do you mean in Germany? No, no. The, the speaker is in speaking. Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We can have a look. Are you flying us out? Hmm? Are you flying us out Yeah, it would be good, huh? Yeah. <laughs>